take my shirt off? Is that something people do in mukbangs? All right, I'm gonna do it. Are you guys ready? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's make let's make it that kind of mukbang. Seven days of the week. I got ways we can eat. Counting ways on the beach. Learning names we can meet. I'm booked. I'm booked. I'm booked. Anyway, today, as you can see, I have some stuff set up for me. I'm doing a little breakfast mukbang. I didn't have a plate, so I put some bacon on here because I was like, uh, I made some bacon for Danielle, or I bought some bacon for Danielle's breakfast, and I was like, you know what? I want bacon too, so I got bacon too. And um, and I this was actually like my dream breakfast when I was a kid. Like, Actually, I don't know what was wrong. Like, when I was a kid, I would see all the different stuff that people would do, like, all the different types of, like, typical breakfast, like bacon, eggs, pancakes, and I'd be like, that's exactly what I want. I want bacon, eggs, pancakes, T-bone steak and eggs, muffin with gravy on top of it, two bowls of cereal. I don't know what it was. Like, I, I was just, I've always been into it. just like, you know, I'm susceptible to commercials. And so commercialization ideologies uh, <laughs> are easy for to seep in. So anyway, this is kind of like a very cool version of like my favorite type of breakfast. This is my absolute all time favorite cereal. All time. This is probably the best cereal that's ever been invented. I don't think there's a better cereal. The only other cereal that I really like, it doesn't even matter. We're not talking about that right now. We're talking about the best cereal of all time golden grams you guys uh, I already read the, the back of this box yesterday before I bought it um, I bought it today but yesterday I was looking at it and I was like oh this looks so good and I read the back of the box the whole golden they, they define golden you know gold obviously is great we know what gold is and then um, Graham Alexander Graham Bell and there's a relation to graham crackers as well so anyway, yes, I'm going to be eating these graham crackers, and uh, let's get into it because I actually have a busy day today. I have some other stuff to do, so let's go. I got the H-E-B, H-E-B milk, a brand new milk. I don't eat cereal, really, like ever, so this is different for me, but I'm doing it for the video. Um, I don't eat cereal anymore. I used to when I was a kid, but as an adult, you don't really eat breakfast because like time doesn't mean anything to you. You're just like, everything is like a meal. Let's see if I can pour this without spilling. That was actually really easy. A splatter escaped. Ooh, and then I just have some classic water here in my reused jar. I don't remember what this was or anything. Okay, start off with some hydration. So, um, oh, let me pray. Um, thank you, Heavenly Father, for this food. Thank you, Lord God, for this morning. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for everything you do for us. Thank you um, for what I'm doing right now and for everybody watching. I pray that you bless this food, help it to nourish my body, um, help us to um, provide for those who do not have, Lord God, and bless the source from which this can. Thank you, Lord God. For your goodness, again, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Let's do it. Danny Bake in the building. Okay, so I'm going to jump right into the, let me see if I got a good, you got to make sure the milk ratio is good. See, that's good. I'm probably going to be adding over time, you know, this is just the vessel, it's not really one meal. That's why you keep the, you keep the milk and the cereal close, because you don't know, you might need a little bit more milk, a little bit more cereal. Oh man, one of my favorite. Actually, I love Golden Grands is one of the few cereals that I really like when it gets soggy. I actually like it when it's soggy. Mmm. Mmm. This is the best. This is the best breakfast cereal of all time. Get some bacon. Um, life is sweet. Life is good. Um. So my day is going to be interesting. 
I'm gonna make some music with some friends. Where? At Bobalicious. This is Boba Cafe. Making music in a Boba Cafe. There's definitely gonna be a video of that and I'm gonna put out what's up. Right. Yeah, it was raining earlier. Um, side. I think more milk at this point would actually help me. Add a bit more milk. <clears throat> I remember there was this one time I went to Barnes and Noble as a young man. I used to go to Barnes and Noble all the time because I started doing independent study. I did independent study in high school from sophomore year to junior year. So for two years, I only had to go to school once. No, no, for the first year, I had to go to school once a week. And then for the second year, I had to go to school until lunch, I think. Um, I mean, the second, third year. Um, and I used to go to Barnes & Noble all the time. There was really nothing better than reading to me. Reading and writing were my two favorite things, and Barnes & Noble is the perfect place to do both. Let me take your shirt off. Hmm? Take my shirt off? Is that <laughs> something people do in mukbangs? <laughs> All right, I'm going to do it. Are you guys ready? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's make, let's make it that kind of mukbang. And Nick Akata does it. Oh, and wow. I'm not, so. You're having mental breakdown. Damn. Yeah, now you don't. Strip on, on screen. What do you think about Nikita? I think he's an um, interesting guy. I think people need to understand that entertainment is entertainment. So anything you see on a TV screen is by virtue not natural because it's created to be watched. So I mean, uh, I don't know. And it's not happening now. It's not happening where you think it's happening. Because you're in the comfort of your own home. And so there's just so many things to be skewed. So it's more about what you plan to get out of it. Would I watch Nick? Do I watch Nick? I watch it sometimes because one thing. Well, because you watch him. But one thing that all these mukbangers do very well is uh, they create media. You know, because that's what they're doing. They, the mukbangers on YouTube. They're doing a really good job because lots of people eat. But... There's a lot of different types of food out in the world, lots of, and the foods are super duper anchored to culture. And in America, you know, there's a lot of different microcultures, there's a lot of different fast food places, there's a lot of different things, and everyone has all their own associations with McDonald's and Chipotle and all these things. But there's a lot of different ones, and so by documenting all of these different foods very well, the consumption of these foods, and then using themselves as like a barometer or a thermometer for what's going on. You're documenting culture in kind of the, and they're talking about, you know, pop news and stuff like that or what's going on in the mukbang community. So it, it really is high voltage media, you know. I think about why at this point in my life I watch a lot of Breakfast Club. And um, I just think that Breakfast Club is doing a very good job of, even though they have a lot of stupid stuff in there, of giving you the most per ratio of like quality media. And I feel like my fingers kind of do the same thing. They take their time. They have good cameras. I like breakfast club. They spend a lot of money on the food. I think breakfast club is like soothing. For some reason, like when I'm in the car, like I don't know why I don't listen to music anymore. Mm. I just like have to listen to... Bacon's gone. Excuse me. Mm. <laughs> I have to listen to breakfast club. I don't know. I just feel like it's just like soothing. It's just like hearing people talk. You know, like you don't want to hear like white noise. I mm -hmm. mean, you don't want to hear like quietness. It's like white noise, just when you're like Charlemagne or like EJ and B in the background. Mm, yeah. I wonder, because I haven't been listening to The Breakfast Club since, as much since their break. I used to listen to it every day, but every time they do this break, it kind of gets me off of it a little bit. And I'm wondering if they have like lower listenership altogether. But yeah, I do think it's, I do think uh, it's soothing. And I, that's why I like podcasts in general. Like, it's one of the most 
Because I think one of the hardest parts for me with driving really long distances was figuring out how to not get really, really bored. And when I discovered podcasts, I started with the Gilmore guys and they had like two hour episodes. I was like, oh, this is perfect. This is just like having someone in the car with you. Yeah, I drive better. Like when I have to drive from, like, San Marcos to Dallas, all the time, like I would always like either call a friend and just talk to a friend for like two hours, and I actually drive better. I feel like I can concentrate better. Oh yeah. When somebody is talking, it's so weird. It's like yeah, it's because like, when you just have like try to do a mu- music does not work. All this nostalgia about like road trip playlists that works for like two hours maximum. Anything over two hours, music is gonna get bored. No, I used to talk to my friend Lauren. Oh my gosh, and I would just like. Car would just fly by. I'd be like, perfect speed, good following distance. I put on some like ratchet music, and I'm just like, oh, okay, I, I'm, I'm not doing well with this right now. But yeah, I like to talk to people while I'm driving. So I think that's why I like podcasts too. Mm-hmm. Why do you look like that while you're eating the cereal? Golden Graham is not cereal, Golden Graham is a success. Of technology oh, really? <laughs> and art <laughs> and, and flavor and beauty. You mm. Stop doing that! It's not that serious. <laughs> oh my god! I've never had anyone to hate on the way that I was eating. Because you not eat cereal like you normally. First of all, I'm sitting in a weird position. Usually, <laughs> I wouldn't have the bowl right next to my face like this. I would be like strategically doing stuff, but I'm. No, no. Okay, I'm kind of I overdid it. I overdid it, guys. That is enough. I'm sure I've passed the daily recommended amounts already. Dun 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 Thumbs down. She really would have thumbs down there. Oh, if course. she was watching this right now, I've watched. I've watched her watch mud things. It's pretty funny, yeah, guys. Yeah. It's pretty funny. She she's pretty aggressive. She actually she gets paid <laughs> <laughs> as a curator of the mud community. She's like, no, you failed today. <laughs> thumbs down. Thumbs. I wasn't gonna do it because you know I'm very nice. I like to give everyone a shot. I'd rather sometimes, just sometimes I thumbs down and down. Like you know what? What would Jesus do? <laughs> You know, that's why I'm not really good at, like, doing a lot of, like, stuff, like, genre stuff. Because I'm, like, aggressively rebellious. But I like to dip and dabble. Just so I have practical insights. You know what I mean? So. Hmm. Four. Four. But I'm gonna finish it. Well, you guys believed me. And this is the Golden Graham Bowl of Cereal Challenge. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, eat as much eat, eat three times a day, sir. That's the challenge, you guys. And eat. Hold on, let me see. One cup is the daily serving size of this, and then one cup, okay. I had roughly one cup, one cup, one cup, one cup, one cup. One cup. Six, oh, you're right, three times. So eat three times the daily search. So three cups of golden grams, three cups of milk, and then tag me in it. Your favorite cereal. Yes, let's go. This is the that. this is the the childhood bowl of cereal challenge. Get the large size box, even though you're not going to put a dent into it. Eat three cups, three cups cereal, three cup milk. Your favorite cereal. Tag me in it. At Kenyon's too. Yeah. At cereal challenge. <laughs> which kid gets a whooping challenge? Which kid gets ground eating all their sister or brother's cereal challenge? Uh-oh. 
You can't. Kids just like ate that. I never really ate cereal, but my brother did. Mm-hmm. And like, my mom would get aggressively mad when he would go and eat like three bowls of cereal and she'd just buy it. Because she's just like, mm-hmm. she'd buy the huge boxes too. And he'll just sit there and eat like three bowls. And she's like, that's not what it's for. Like, you can't make this like into See, a buffet of cereal. That's because there was only one of them. Now, I think because we had four kids, my parents thinking, and we were poor, very poor, at a certain point. I think that when I was young, anyway, when I was at cereal eating age reform, and I think what they were thinking was, um, we have to feed these kids. And whatever we can get them to eat. Because I really think about the stuff that they let me eat, other than like Nigerian food, which was actually very good quality and healthy, but the American stuff that they would let me eat, they would kind of let me eat like really certain, certain kinds of really cheap stuff, like those dollar dinners. And with cereal, they would very rarely buy this kind of stuff. When they figured out that we would eat a lot of it, it was those big bags of the generic brands. Yeah. But I would smirk Dirk. What the heck is that? Mark Dirk. Ah. Dragon Ball Z was coming up, I'd be like, all right. Okay. The bowl. Okay. Yes. Good. The milk. All right, good. Hook it up. Oh, hold up. Got my cup. Oh, there's no more Tampico. Anyway, it's good. It's you must not have any friends. I have drink water anyway. Oh, I didn't have that much. That many friends. I didn't. <laughs> I really didn't. I mean, I had a lot of friends at school, but like as far as like at home or on the weekends and stuff like that, not really. I did have friends who lived around me. Um, I don't know where they were. I didn't do a lot of Saturday, Saturday mornings. Was not even when I had friends. I remember my mom told me this one story, and she was like, "You had this friend come over once," and I was like, "Ready for him to leave?" So I just like stop hanging out. <laughs> Yeah. Because I really valued my whole life. I valued my private time. Like Saturday morning was a very good time to be alone. They're like I didn't want my siblings around. It would upset me. Actually, I didn't like when people were around. I don't know I, because they're gonna mess something up. Either they're gonna want to change the channel or they're gonna try to do something to me. I just didn't want anyone around. Okay, it was better when it was me. I could control everything, the quantities of my stuff. I enjoyed just. Picking my TV show, I can change the channel. If I decide I want to do a quick seven minutes of a surfing, just TV surfing, I don't have anyone saying, oh my God, oh, please. Just, just allow me to live my life. <laughs> I want to eat some cereal. When I was ready for somebody to leave, like if they put the night in my house, and like Saturday morning, like, I was just different. I don't eat cereal in the morning, like I'll eat stuff. No, please, <laughs> please, stop. That's gonna be so funny on video because that's why I'm pointing that look at me. <laughs> like, to see if you're watching. <laughs> and Meg would be like, I wonder why he looked over. Oh, and then as soon as I pour it, you're like, no. <laughs> yes, guys, I, I have to sneak. If I want to take any extra, okay. I gotta be, well, I gotta try to dodge. But it's good because you want someone to keep your well, goggles. This is video's audition for my 600 pound life. He's taking James' position. Oh, R. P. J. That's not funny. Did you guys really die? Cause I saw him on YouTube. Shut up! You guys wouldn't like really know who turned it. Anyways, what can I do? I used to, uh, I used to like eat weird stuff in the morning. Like if my mom made like gumbo or like fajitas the night before, I would eat it for breakfast. I would never eat cereal. I used to not like eggs or nothing like that. So like I would come and eat like regular ass food, right? And then my friends would be like, hey, where's the cereal? Uh, are you gonna have French toast with your pancakes? I was like, when's your mom come? <laughs> like, get out of here, man. I'm eating gumbo from the night before. I'm eating jambalaya. I'm eating some green beans and rice and gravy. Like, I used to eat, like, very, like, practically. Mm-hmm. I'm eating dinner for breakfast. I never liked breakfast. I don't even like cereal to... Day. Yeah. Like those cookies I bought last night, they were the mini chips of Hawaii. You know how many I ate of them? One. <laughs> I ate like three and they're just they're like the size of like a penny. You have to drink the if, if you can't drink the milk, I mean the share is fresh. Yeah, and then afterwards you just check your insulin. Oh my gosh. Diabetes! This is such a terrible breakfast, if you really think about it. 